Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Prime News. Uh, I actually have something I want you guys to do before we get into it, because we have, what, eight big stories for you today. One of the biggest episodes of Prime News, maybe ever in the history of the channel. Because of that, I want you to go down there and hit that like button. Seriously, drop a like. I have a goal to make this the most liked video on the channel here in, well, 2020. Now, I don't even know how many likes that's going to take. 500, 800, 1,000, I have no idea. Also, I heard something like likes make videos go viral. And if we're ever going to get to 70,000, or if you want to help us get to that road to 100,000, uh, we need to get videos to go viral, whatever that even means. Uh, so drop likes, especially if you really enjoy these Prime News episodes. Also, hey, look, you know, it doesn't hurt that we're also doing a giveaway, right? Two copies, Super Mario 3D All-Stars, winner announced on, uh, well, February 11th the day before announced both winners two of them so yeah let's uh open worldwide details down in the description let's uh get into this i have so many notes here uh in fact this very first story is about the sony financials because their third quarter report has come in and man oh man do we have some playstation 5 data bunch of interesting stuff Graphs galore going to be popping up for you guys when it's appropriate. Let's get into this. First off, uh, the PlayStation 5 has shipped 4.5 million units through December 31st, 2020. And we can just presume it means it's sold through 4.5 million because, uh, yeah, Sony's selling literally everything they throw out. Uh, next up, the PlayStation 4 actually shipped the exact same amount of units during its launch quarter back in 2013. So they're doing the same amount of shipments, which is crazy considering the demand. You would hope they would increase, but it is what it is. They have sold 18.4 million first-party games sold uh, during the holiday season between the PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5. Uh, their active PlayStation Network users has reached 114 million users. However... That's how many people are paying for PlayStation Plus. PlayStation Plus subscriptions are at 47.4 million, which is nearly a 10 million increase over the same period in 2019. PlayStation 4 total sales, the cumulative sales of PlayStation 4 have surpassed, surprise, surprise, PlayStation 1, which sold around 105 million. PlayStation 4's total is at 115.1 million. This is extremely important to remember because hey, look, um, PlayStation 4 sales are going to drop off a cliff with PlayStation 5 in its first full year. So these are pretty close, maybe an extra million or so on what the final sales figures are going to be. Likely going to fall just short of passing the Game Boy, uh, but still, it's the second best-selling PlayStation in PlayStation history behind the PlayStation 2. Uh, we also know here that uh, for its final sales period where it's really going to matter for the holidays the playstation 4 did sell 1.4 million units uh we now know the playstation 5 is currently being sold at a loss this has officially been reported by sony themselves um here's a quick glance at sony's revenue breakdown for games and network services so 23 percent of its hardware uh is is their revenue but 29 percent is actually their is actually from add-on content this is microtransactions dlc uh, so yeah, hardware numbers are actually kind of flatlined with what it was last year, but uh, to see that increase on microtransactions and DLC shows that, yeah, Sony's game division makes a majority of its money uh, right now, either from selling hardware or from, hey, look, uh, go buy, you know, a skin in a game or go buy some DLC. Uh, next up after that is 20% of their revenue comes from the digital software. So digital sales of games, 20% of revenue comes from that. 11% of revenue comes from subscriptions. So PlayStation Plus, uh, next up after that is 7% on accessories and only 6% for package software. This always brings up the question, like, is it time to move on from package software and go digital only? Well, the profitability of digital games is a lot higher. This doesn't state that digital games outsell physical, which they might and probably do, but they are massively more profitable than physical games. So uh, you're going to see profit margins favor digital regardless. Uh, this is the best quarter, by the way, ever for Sony's game division in terms of revenue and profit. And here, here's a chart showing that. As you can see, uh, it just slightly beat out, you know, a couple quarters back. So yeah, um, Sony is crushing it uh, better than they've ever crushed it before at least from the games division. Sony's obviously a much larger company and isn't at their 
peak of profitability they've ever been at as a company. All right. Uh, next up, we have um, 87% of PlayStation 5 users are subbed to PlayStation Plus. So we talked about what those figures are like before with the 47 plus million PlayStation Plus subscribers. But it turns out if you own a PlayStation 5, 4.5 million sold, 87% of those users are part of PlayStation Plus. Miles Morales, we got some sales figures for that now. It's at 4.1 million in sales across both platforms. Uh, the goal for the current quarter is to ship... 3 million PlayStation 5s from right now through March 31st. Uh, that would actually put it launch aligned with exactly what they did with the PlayStation 4. So through its first holiday and uh, next quarter, PlayStation 4 would shipped 7.5 million units. They're looking to do the same thing with PlayStation 5. Again, I would like to see them increase those numbers, but uh, they're choosing to stick with the PlayStation 4 trajectory, assuming they're going to catch up eventually to demand at some point later in 2021. A lot of analysts are saying that, hey, look, we're going to have shortages on this into the second half of 2021. It's just how it's going to be. Um, next up, uh, I need to give a shout out to Daniel Ahmed. Uh, he's a senior analyst at Nika Partners. Uh, he gave us all the graphs and all this information. Uh, it's right there on his Twitter profile. Shout out to him. You guys might better know him as ZHugeX, uh, user at formerly at NeoGAF, now at Reset Era. Um, but he does a lot of this stuff now on Twitter. He kind of doesn't do as much on the forum space. So there you go. Uh, thank you, man, for all that info. Let's get into our second story. And I need to actually reference my notes again. Uh, Mass Effect Legendary Edition is coming out on May 14th on every single platform, PC, PlayStation 4, uh, Xbox One, PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X, etc. S, uh, but Switch for now. Uh, there's actually a ton of changes to the trilogy of games, and here's, screw it, look at the trailer. Uh, but obviously the stuff that will stand out is that on certain platforms it'll be in 4K uh, at 60 FPS, plus a lot of visual overhauls and changes that you may or may not love, depending on, you know, if you enjoy these changes. Honestly, just watch that footage that you're seeing now to get, get an idea. Also, they have not ruled out a Switch version. When talking about this yesterday, they noted that while they are focused on the current versions and haven't even thought about Switch yet, they haven't ruled it out and they plan to at least try to make it work down the line, if it seems feasible. They are releasing this on PlayStation 4, Xbox One, so there is actually hope for you know switch people out there so honestly uh we have hope we're gonna keep the hope alive otherwise enjoy it on the other platforms when it comes out uh, i am actually considering picking this up because hey look i like mass effect so why not get the best versions of that original trilogy we could just forget andromeda ever existed because what a mess that was uh all right uh next up we have our first review in for Super Mario 3D All-Stars. Now, this comes from Famitsu. We always get our very first review from Famitsu. Uh, the, uh, the game with Bowser's Fury, so Super Mario 3D World plus Bowser's Fury, got a 36 out of 40 from Famitsu. It's a little strange because they go on to praise the Bowser's Fury mode uh, in their review, but the original release on Wii U got a 38 out of 40, so it actually scored worse even though they seem to like it better. See, I, it, did, did Super Mario 3D World not age very well? That is something to consider, but again, this is just Famitsu. Uh, we should have other reviews coming in a, a week uh, from all the other major outlets out there, and we'll obviously address that, maybe even its own individual video, uh, briefly probably brought up in another Prime News episode. So there you go, Super Mario 3D All-Stars is scoring worse than it did Super Mario 3D All-Star. See, guys, you caught me in this error before. I know what's happening. Super Mario 3D World, Super Mario 3D All-Star. What are you doing to me, Nintendo? What are you doing to me? You're scrambling my brain. Get out of my brain. Get out of my head, please. All right, let's get back into the important stuff. Apex Legends has finally had its release date confirmed for Nintendo Switch. We have some additional information as well. It is coming out on March 9th. That's right, next month so that rumored february 2nd february 8th february 12th it's not coming this month it's coming march 9th however we have to actually give some praise to ea because they are making this game one feature parody you are not getting a lesser version of the game on switch obviously you're going to have you know a lower resolution and all that but you are getting the full version of the game we can't confirm whether it's 30 or 60 fps yet 
Uh, they haven't revealed that much of it, but we know it's coming March 9th. We know it's going to have the exact same features, all the exact same content, cross platform play with all other platforms so they're not separating out the user base and they're like oh you play with mobile people and hey you go get to play with your friends on playstation or xbox no nope. everyone's playing together that's the way they're doing it it's the way i prefer it to be done uh in addition to that they're actually going to give a few bonuses to switch owners because season eight actually comes out like this week and Switch is getting it a month later. So because it's getting it a month later, if you buy the Battle Pass, they're going to level you up for free to 30 levels into that Battle Pass. Also, they're going to allow Switch owners to get double XP for the first few weeks. Essentially, from the time it launches through the end of March, if you're on Switch, you can get double XP playing the game. Now, I have personally never actually played Apex Legends, uh, so it's going to be interesting to me to actually go and pick up the game and try it on Switch because... I'm going to actually play it on Switch. I'm not going to buy it on PC or Xbox Series X or any other options I have to play the game. I'm going to stick to the Switch version, um, maybe even do a launch live stream with you guys because, hey, I enjoy other games uh, like Fortnite, so why not give a shot to Apex Legends? Maybe I'll end up liking it even more. Now, there is a physical version of the game coming out. However, they're doing that. It's just a box thing, putting a code in a box. I disagree every time this happens. I think it's a waste of plastic. If you're going to give us a physical version, just give us an actual physical version. But that's not what they're going to do. It's a digital code in a box. I guess for you people that like to collect boxes, that's good for you. Although you could just like go buy go buy a Switch box and make your own cover and stick it in if you really care that much. But I guess there's something about it being official that makes it more collectible, I suppose, for collectors out there. Uh, so whatever, <laughs> that is what it is. Uh, also, guess who did this part? EA gave like a thousand percent of the credit, which you know when people say, "Oh, give a thousand percent, give a hundred and ten percent," you can only give 100. There's only a hundred. There's only there's only a hundred percent is everything. Um, they gave all the credit to Panic Button. Uh, so yes, our port extraordinaires that did Doom, and Doom Eternal, and a couple other games. Panic Button uh, are the ones that ported this game. So you know it's going to be the best possible port it can be because Panic Button is still, you know, right up there as the gold standard. There's a couple other port companies that are actually doing a pretty good job as well, but Panic Button is the gold standard for Switch porting. This next story is a big one, but we kind of covered it in an individual video yesterday. Of course, we're talking about Nintendo not abandoning Nintendo Directs. At least, it doesn't seem like it. They're actually hiring someone to create AV content uh, at the company, and this includes handling trailers and media and a whole bunch of video-related projects, but included in that hiring listing post is that they will be responsible for filming live action. This is important. Live action action segments for Nintendo Directs. Now, if you notice, Nintendo over the last year or two hasn't really had a lot of live action segments. In fact, I can't seem to remember really any. Was there one back in the September 2019? I don't even think there was a live action segment in that one. I think it's been all just voiceover with graphics on screen and like a timeline of events. Uh, they haven't really gone with the whole live action thing, I guess, maybe since E3 2019. And they don't call those Nintendo Directs. Those are digital events or E3 presentations. So uh, it's very interesting to see that they actually call live action segments, which means in person, probably on a green screen like I am right now. Uh, so yeah, I honestly, this gives me hope there's going to be future Nintendo Directs. Uh, so that's just something I wanted to bring up because, uh, you know, it's that big of a story. It deserves to be talked about twice. And you might have missed it. So here it is on Prime News. Our next story is a big one, at least for me. And Eric, you guys might not remember Eric from the Nintendo Prime podcast, but um, he literally fell out of his chair at work when I told him this news. Uh, college football is coming back in video game form. That's right, the NCAA football series, which has been missing for seven years, is coming back. Now, why was the series gone? Well, let's just say there was a lot of disputes over player likenesses and names and all this stuff that kind of made it hard because the NCAA uh, treats them as college students rather than college athletes. So they, you know, make a bunch of money and sell a bunch of jerseys and use their names in all the media and they hype a Heisman Trophy up and all this stuff and get people all hyped up for the NFL draft. But at the same point, they don't allow these college players to actually make any money. They can't even sign autographs. That's how stingy the NCAA is. So after seven years, EA is finally gone around the NCAA to get back into making a college football game. And it's going to be called College Football. Now, 
It will not be coming out this year. They said sometime in the next couple of years. So we're probably looking at 2022 as the earliest release. Maybe 2023. Got to remember, they're just starting development up again. Now, they obviously have Madden and the old NCAA games they can kind of work off of to try to build a new one. But I would like to see them take at least a couple years here instead of trying to rush something out here in a few months. Um, I think that's the better approach because we want to see this done right. Now, they have partnered with the CLC, which has rights to over 100 college FBS teams, and they're trying to work out, you know, contracts with other ones that may, might be bigger names that aren't part of the CLC. Uh, this includes the logos, this includes the uniforms, this includes the stadiums, and even certain traditions. As an example, I'm a Wisconsin Badger fan, and we have the jump around thing uh, that happens between the third and fourth quarter, uh, stuff like that. Obviously, you want to get, you know, the, the songs, the official theme music in for the, 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 the all the stuff, you want the mascots, all of that. That's able to be done. Also, they have the rights to the college football playoffs, which is really, really important to include as that's like the culmination of a season in college sports. Now, what's really exciting, obviously, for those who don't know, is that when you play college football in the past, the NCAA games, you could raise up your players in your program and then draft them into Madden itself. I'm assuming that's going to be continued and a whole other reason why, hey, look, might as well wait for 2022 when they could sync up the development of this game with Madden to work in you know, hand in hand. And hopefully this leads to improvements to franchise mode, which has been severely um, untouched by Madden for quite some time as they've been focusing on Mutt and all the other modes that make them more money. But frankly, I'm a franchise mode kind of guy, so this is all good to me. Uh, and also, the NCAA games in the past always played differently than Madden. They, they, people look at football games and go, oh man, one football game is the same as the other football game. That's not always the case. And when it comes to Madden, it definitely... And Madden versus NCAA, there definitely was major gameplay differences. So I'm kind of hoping that kind of continues too, to give you two different football experiences. So Sonic Prime has been announced. It is a new 3D animated Netflix series for, you guessed it, Sonic the Hedgehog. I mean, you're welcome, guys. I'm Nintendo Prime, Sonic Prime. Who do you think named this series? Come on. Come on, baby. Give me some credit. Give me some. Netflix, Sega. I expect a check in the mail, please. You are infringing. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I mean, come on. Amazon Prime existed before me. Let's get real here. But, uh... Sonic Prime is coming out. It's coming out next year. It's going to be 24 episodes. It's supposed to be a coming of age kind of story. A How do they describe it exactly? A journey of self-discovery. Had to glance at my notes for that one to make sure I got the quotes exactly right. Now, it doesn't have like the, the old Sonic voice actor that for the last 10 years isn't even doing Sonic anymore. The Tails voice actor is not involved in this either, although he hasn't been fired. He's just not doing this series. Uh, so yeah, and this comes to wake up, obviously, the massively successful Sonic the Hedgehog live action movie, which is also getting a sequel, probably in 2022. Uh, so, like the year of Sonic next year, kind of cool. Um, the show is obviously intended for kids ages 6 to 11, uh, but hey, you know, I'm sure adults will enjoy it as well. Uh, to be honest, I enjoyed the old school Sonic the Hedgehog show, you know, with the chili dogs. We'll see what uh, if those make a comeback as a nice little reference to the old show. But anyways, uh, that's it. Or is it? See, I actually have a fun little note to end this video with. Because you guys know I always break down Nintendo's financials. And in this video, I broke down Sony's financials. And someday we'll probably get to Microsoft's game financials in one of these videos as well. Now that I cover all gaming news. But here's the thing. This is a very interesting note, and I discovered this on an old forum that's been shunned by the internet in NeoGAF for some pretty good reasons, to be fair, but also like, hey, look, you know, I don't really care where the information comes from. I care the information's accurate, and this is accurate, and I have verified it. So it looks like Nintendo Switch from 2017 through 2020 has been not only more profitable, has exceeded the entire net money made and profits made from the PlayStation 4, period. <laughs> That's right. Look at this graph. See, the Nintendo Switch and Nintendo has made more money in significantly less time, about four years, than the PlayStation 4 has. So from 2013 through 2020, that's seven years of PlayStation 4, the Switch and Nintendo has been more profitable in less time. 
Obviously, you expand this out for another three years of Switch, and Switch is going to dominate the PlayStation 4, which is Sony's second most successful platform ever released. So, this isn't like a Sony versus Nintendo thing. It's kind of an interesting note that Nintendo seems to know what they're doing. They bounced back from Wii U in a way I don't know that any of us that owned Wii U uh, thought they could. You know, even when you throw 3DS in, you know, think about it. The uh, 3DS sold about 74, 75 million. You throw in the Wii U at 13 million. That gets you to what? 87, 88 million units combined for last gen. But then you look at Switch at already at 80 million. It's good. <laughs> and Switch is going to blow that gen out of the water combining sales. So... Nintendo's on to something. I really hope Switch Pro is coming. I really hope a next-gen Switch that makes sense, like a Super Switch or Switch 2, like a, a, a naming convention that makes sense, and they don't leave the Switch audience behind. Nintendo has something here. They let it go when they had it with Wii. They had lightning in a bottle with Wii, and they didn't evolve with the times. They didn't get a Wii HD out. They brought us Wii U, which was not the kind of product that should have been. And even though, by the way, I love Wii U. But now we have Switch. There is nothing really taking out the Switch. PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X are here. You wouldn't know it if you are a Nintendo fan. Switch is just dominating in the sales. So, Nintendo, I beg of you. You see what's happening here. You see the same numbers I do. Keep it going. And keep Switch going for another decade or so. Like, not this Switch, but like, iterate. Give us new. Give us better. Because we don't need more innovation. We need more of what this is. Just better. All right, folks. I am Nintendo Rubble Jets from the Center Prime. Thank you for tuning into this episode of Prime News. And you know what time it is. It's time to dance on out of here.